Hey guys, thanks for joining me today here on Teslanomics. What I'm going to do is talk about EV sales in 2016. There's a good website out there called EV Volumes that released a report recently and has tons of good data about what's going on in the electric vehicle market in all the different regions in the world. So I thought let's dive into the data and see what's really happening there. And what we do on this channel each week, if you're new here, is we break down data behind something Tesla related, whether that's the company themselves or how they did the name change and what that means for the market or things like electric vehicles like we're going to talk about today. I'd love for you to join us. And it's a lot of fun where we look at what the data really has to show instead of maybe what the media tries to spin out there. So uh, if you're new to the family, please join us. And if you're already a member, please share this video and like it and tell everyone else you know about it. It really helps grow the community so we can all gain a better understanding about this new world we're living and this company that's really changing it. And as always, I have links to everything I talk about down in the notes below in the description of this video, uh, as well as other programs and things that will help support the channel, like getting a thousand bucks off a of Tesla. We have a referral program, and if you do that, and we get enough people to do it, I'll actually get to go to the Model 3 event, and of course, break down everything that happens there and share everything about it. So if you're interested or in the market for that, please consider using that code down below. There's no catch, just a thousand bucks to you for being a part of this community. So let's dive into the data now and see what it has to say. So first off, plugins have more than tripled since 2013, and last year's growth rate overall was about 42%, which is really big. Now, if this were to continue, in about 2030, 8 out of 10 cars would actually be electric vehicles. And that seems a little unlikely to me, you know, because the way these things work is there's kind of exponential growth in the beginning, then there's this chasm they have to cross to become mainstream. And I'm not sure if we're there yet, but it is encouraging to see electric vehicles all throughout the world grow at a tremendous rate of 42% in 2016 compared to 2015. Now, a lot of this is because the charging infrastructure is increasing worldwide. The battery prices are dropping. In fact, they're over 50% cheaper in the past three years, which means that as those prices continue to drop, so will the cost of producing and making and buying these electric vehicles. So all those lead to really good signs for this industry, as well as the renewable market is continuing to grow. So solar in a lot of parts of the world now is much cheaper than using fossil fuels. And that's because of the infrastructure needed. Now, in more developed nations like the United States, where we have massive amounts of fossil fuel based infrastructure, it's a lot cheaper still. However, as the rest of the world comes online and starts to develop, a lot of these technologies, renewable being one of them, is going to be the cheaper and better option. And when that happens, the reason that matters for the EV market is because you will be able to power your vehicle using this free renewable source, whether it be wind or solar or whatever. And it's not just about the consumer side where me and you have cars that we use to go to work and back. It's also in a large part about the commercial end of it. Think about all the delivery trucks delivering packages or water or whatever it may be driving around. Those equate to a ton of CO2 that's emitted and they're very expensive to maintain. So as batteries continue to get cheaper and the refueling of them using renewable sources continues to drop as well, it's going to make much more financial sense for a lot of of companies for a lot of trucking companies as well as all the other types of companies that use delivery vehicles to switch to electric cars and when they do that you're gonna see I believe a huge spike in the EV market so we're really in what I would call a frothy environment where it's not boiling over it's not bubbling up yet but it's coming to that sometime soon and none of this really speaks to the fact of the Tesla Gigafactory. Now this just came online in December of 2016 and it started producing batteries in a partnership with Panasonic. And these batteries are the new 2170 cells that are much more fuel efficient and energy dense. And when I say that, what I'm talking about is now, for example, the Tesla Powerwall 2 has almost double the capacity of the Tesla Powerwall 1 because they're using these new cells. These are also gonna be the cells that are in the Model 3s and you have to imagine and they're going to be in the Model S and X as production continues to ramp up. So with that, the Gigafactory is still only 30% open, and that is already 4.9 million square feet uh, across multiple floors, a 1.9 million square foot footprint. And it's just not even halfway there. It's insane. It's going to continue to grow, and they're already planning other Gigafactories in parts of the world. So 
And so Tesla is pushing forward with this. So when they have a huge scale environment like a gigafactory, the cost again is just going to continue to drop. So I think in a few years here, we're going to see EVs in a lot of countries become the preferred option just because it's cheaper and better. Forget the whole green argument and whether or not it's be better for the environment. None of that matters when you make something that is actually cheaper and better. And that's the argument I think that folks like me who do believe in climate change and all the science and everything behind it, we need to think about in terms of how to win this battle. It's not to convince people that they're wrong or whatever. It's to show them that there are better ways to do things. And these better ways also have a better impact on the environment. All right, so let's look at the regions now. And the first region I really think you have to pay attention to or focus on is China. Now, China is up 85% over 2015. That's insane. That is a huge increase for an already huge market. In fact, they had about 350,000 EVs delivered last year, and that by far is the most out of any country in the world. And the deal there, of course, is that they have a lot of people. I mean, almost triple the amount of people than the United States, and maybe it's more around there. But the point being, that they are pushing hard into this EV future. And it has a lot to do with the pollution and smog and everything else that plagues a lot of their big cities. If you've seen any of the photos, I had a friend that just went and visited there. He had to wear a mask everywhere he went. It was really bad. So they are a great case study in how electric vehicles and renewable energy can dramatically change an environment, uh, especially urban environments like that. Even if you go back in the United States and look at New York 30 years ago before the Clean Air Protection Act and all that, you can see just how much different it is today. So I think China is going to be a major, major player in this market going forward. Now, it also says good things for Tesla. Now, Tesla has recently announced that they're going to build a Model 3 factory or they're going to be producing Model 3 in China. That's to avoid the taxes and the fees it takes to actually import them from the United States, which is fine. This is how a lot of companies do it, right? A lot of the uh, stuff you hear in the news about GM make, making cars in Mexico, well, a lot of those cars are being sold in Mexico as well. So it's one of those things where it just makes a lot more sense to build them over there uh, if you're selling them over there to avoid uh, the cost and everything else with uh, transporting them around. Now there is somewhat of a slowdown that was happening in China recently where they changed the regulations, they reduced the incentives, and that put some vehicles completely out of the category to get those tax subsidies. But I think as the new longer range battery electric vehicles or new energy vehicles as they call them in China, uh, as those come online like the Tesla Model 3, you're gonna see a huge uptick again. Because again, this is a big investment for them and a big part of their strategy over the next five to 10 years. As far as Tesla goes in China, they already do have a supercharger network, which is fairly robust. I would say there's a lot of destination chargers as well. And this is good news. Now, even with the 1.8 Chinese yuan, which is just the cost that they're going to charge you per kilowatt hour to use the supercharger network, that equates to about 25 cents US or euros. And it's pretty cheap considering how much you may travel and how big the country is. So uh, you can take a look at that on a map I built where I'll put it up in the car for you to link over and you can see just where those charge where those chargers are and what the cost may be now on to my home country, the United States. And the United States is doing fairly well. We had a 36% increase in 2016 over 2015, with December being the biggest month ever for EV sales. And in fact, January is continuing to be pretty good as well. So back in January, uh, there was a 70% increase in January 2017 over January of 2016. I'm guessing, maybe I'm speculating, I don't know, I hope not too bad. But the point is, is that I think because Tesla eliminated the program for free supercharge which ended on January 15th, that may have had something to do with that spike we saw in early January. Now, unfortunately, Tesla doesn't report those monthly numbers like that. They do only report the quarterly ones. So we'll have to take a look a little bit closer to the details when they do their financial report. Public charging locations in the United States also had a big bump. They were about 22% increased overall, and that includes the Tesla supercharger network. And plug-in hybrids actually gain more market share than the battery electric ones. So think like the Ford Focus or the Chevy Volt, which is a gas electric hybrid, but it's a plug-in one. Those actually increased. And I think it's because that the range anxiety of the other, the pure electric cars is still pretty strong. You know, besides the Tesla and now the Chevy Bolt, no other cars get above 200 miles. So we'll see how that shifts. In fact, I'm just going to say that as the Model 3 starts to come out and thousands and thousands of the, these Model 3s get out there, you're going to see a big shift 
in in that percentage. So I think people are going to go away from those plug-in gas hybrids to the pure electric vehicles uh, because they do have the range that they're looking for. Now, California is leading the way when it comes to EV sales in the United States with almost 50% of all EV sales in 2016. And that's shocking. Um, those other nine states equated to about 13% of EV sales in the US and California alone was almost 50%. So I guess that makes sense. You know, uh, California has a huge percentage of the population out of the United States. And we very strongly out here believe in things like climate change. And so we want to spend our money and things like Tesla's and all that. So it does make a lot of sense considering all that. But it is still shocking to me. That's just number seems a bit a bit outrageous. And I was really surprised when I saw it. So one of the big questions there that I have is how long is the federal tax subsidy going to last? Now, I've had a lot of people comment that it's going to last forever and it's, you know, here to stay and all this, but I just don't buy it. I don't like to think of things like subsidies as my incentive or really count on them. You know, it's like if you got, went to a company and got a, hired for a job and they paid you a 20% bonus or they said they give out 20% bonuses every year. That's great, but I wouldn't count on that money for my family because what happens if they don't pay out that bonus? What happens if those things change? And so the way this program works in the United States, just to put it out there, is each manufacturer has 200,000 cars, electric vehicles, and when they produce 200,000, that tax subsidy two quarters later drops to 50% of what it was. So it's 7,500 bucks up to 7,500 bucks to start. And so all Teslas require or qualify for that because they have enough of the uh, energy and they meet all the requirements. So if you buy a new Tesla, you get 7,500 bucks off, not to mention the thousand bucks off for being a member here. Um, and those cars, once they hit 200,000, they're already at 135,000. So they'll hit that this year for sure. Once they produce, not sell, but produce that 200,000th car, two quarters later, it's going to drop to 50%. Two quarters after that, it'll be 25%. And then two quarters later, so six quarters later, so a year and a half after they've hit that mark, the subsidy is going to be down to zero. So I would venture a guess that in the best case scenario, in two years from now or two and a half years from now, that subsidy for Teslas will be completely gone. Now, this doesn't also account for the kind of erratic Republican administration that's currently in the White House. They've made a number of actions and signed a number of executive orders that really put a lot of dissent towards green technologies and uh, renewables and all that kind of stuff. And so there's a lot going on there. And so I wouldn't even put it past our new Republican president to just put out an order to cancel this program entirely. I don't know if that's legal, but that doesn't seem to bother him either. So who knows? But the point being, again, I hate making decisions with these kind of things baked in. They're nice, but I would hate to buy this car or buy an electric vehicle, planning on that, then not get it and regret my purchase. That's just not how I operate. I like to do things wholeheartedly, and then if these other little benefits float in, that's awesome. I'm stoked on that. So in Europe, they had about a 13% increase, which is a little bit down from the previous year, the 2014 to 2015 growth. And that's maybe due to some of the changes in the Netherlands and Denmark. They're reducing some of the subsidies there. But honestly, if you're in the Netherlands and Denmark, you're probably riding a bike. I love those areas of the world. Uh, they are so fun and I love the architecture and I love getting around on a bicycle. And that's kind of how they're built. In fact, if you look, uh, I was in Maastricht, Netherlands a couple years ago, and there, the, there would be one tiny little lane for cars and then five times that size for all the bikes. So I think you just get a bike if you're in that area. Don't worry about it. Take the train, do all that kind of stuff. So that's maybe why. Uh, and one thing about Europe I want to point out is Norway again. Now they are up 71% from 2014. And this has a lot to do with the incentives there. And those incentives are pretty good. They're probably some of the best in the world. And they're at, interesting because they're at a tipping point where about 19% of all vehicles in Norway is sold last year were electric vehicles. And that's right at that point, if you look at some of the math and economics about this, where things will actually start to become mainstream and the preferred choice for everybody. So if you're in Norway, I actually want to want to know, are electric vehicles mainstream? Are this year they going to equate to just as many, maybe 50-50 of non-electric vehicles? Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Send me a picture, all that kind of stuff. I love seeing that. So uh, I'll engage with you in the comments down below there. 
So overall, 2016 was a really big year for electric vehicles across the entire world. China stands out as having the most with 350,000 deliveries, far more than anyone else. Uh, the United States has a lot coming up and they're not too far behind, especially with the Tesla Model 3 rolling out this year and maybe mass production of the Chevy Bolt, which could bring another big boom to the US manufacturing uh, as well as the electric vehicle market here. But considering gas is really cheap here in the United States because we have all this infrastructure that we built, I'm not sure that electric vehicles really will become super mainstream uh, in the near term. Now again, in a couple years when everyone's driving around in these awesome Tesla Model 3s and these really economical cars, I think you'll start to see it pick up more and more. But until then, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of short on that. So what do you think? How are EVs selling in your neck of the woods? Uh, are they popular? Is it something that's more early adopters on the fringe? Or are you in the market yourself? Let me know what you think down below. And again, remember, if you are in the market for a Tesla, you can use our referral code and get a thousand bucks off. And that does help the channel because uh, it gives us kind of cool gifts and all that. But more importantly, if we get eight people to do it before March 15th, we get to go to the Model 3 event and I get to share that experience with you here on this channel. So thanks again for watching and I will see you back here next time.